everybody, me and Dean back at you with another video today. And today we've got another episode of our popular Cheap and Cheerful series. And we're going really cheap with the first one here. And pretty cheap with the other two. All under $30 including pretty taxes as always. All available at BC Liquor Store, so if you happen to be in BC, this is going to be pretty easy for you to find. Uh, I think. So, first of all, we were starting off, we've got two Italian whites and an Australian red. I'm excited about the red because it's kind of strange. We'll get to that one a little later. We're going to start here with Rapatala Grillo Sicilia. Um, Sicilia, that's from Sicily, obviously. That pretty much gives it away. Grillo was the grape, and I have never had Grillo ever, I don't think. So, this was this is $16.99 in BC liquor stores. Right now it's on sale for $12.99. 13 bucks a bottle. Uh, so I'm hoping it's quaffable. Please just be drinkable. At 13 bucks, that's all I'm really hoping for. Mmm. It's like, uh, like toasted almonds. Mmm, white flowers, pear. Like, uh, crunchy yellow apple skin. It's a nice note. For 13 bucks. I hope it's good. Hmm, yeah, okay. Let's dive in. Let's see how we're doing here. Come on, $13 wine. Oh. Yeah, that's perfectly decent. I think it needs food. It's uh, acidity's medium plus to high, actually probably high. The flavors are kind of similar to the palate. I mean, flavors are kind of similar to the nose, obviously. Um, there's a citrus, a little bit of lemon, um, lemon zest, red, red apple, um, maybe a tiny bit of honeysuckle, and uh, the almonds are back. Like uh, finishes, it's kind of a medium minus finish. That's probably the one thing that's going to keep it from a really high score. Um, but it's not bad for thirteen bucks. Jesus. Even at its regular price of sixty nine nine. Perfectly quaffable, and I bet you, you know, I haven't really looked a whole lot into Grillo because I just I don't know anything about it. Oh, it says that on the back it says it's idea with white meat grilled and baked fish. Yes, um, can be idea with what they have in Sicily, right? Got a lot of white fish. Uh, I bet this would be absolutely delicious with a nice halibut dish, a subtle halibut dish. You know what we can get here in Canada. You can go with salmon, but I think I'd stick to white fish, halibut, or cod, sable fish. Got some sable fish, which is called black cod. In case you didn't know that, I didn't know that for until recently. And sometimes I see a recipe for black cod, and I didn't know what that was. It's just sable fish. It's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, this is not gonna make you forget the great wines you've ever had in your life. But for the price, you can't expect it to. It's perfectly quaffable. Uh, I'm going to go to the liquor store and get another one or two of these for 13 bucks. Uh, March 31st, it's on sale until uh, if I ever read the website correctly. So, yeah, um, uh, I'm going to get a couple more of these and I'm going to try them with food. Uh, for now, I'm having steak for dinner tonight, so this is clearly not going to go for that. Uh, so, but I'll, we'll probably just sip this during the day and. Uh, I'll get another couple and we'll try them with a fish dish or a chicken dish, something. Fish for me, chicken for the wife, she doesn't eat fish. And I bet you it'll be a really nice pairing. Okay, so that's good. So let's go on to the next Italian wine. All right, so here's wine number two. Monte del Fra Caldo Magro, 2017. Uh, um, you're seeing the price and the details right now. I will tell you the blend. This is you ready for this? You might need a pen. Forty percent Garganegia, Garganegia, I think it's pronounced. Twenty percent Trebbiano Toscano. Five percent Tokai Frugliano. Ten percent Cortese. 
Cortesi, I think that's pronounced. 15% Encrocio Manzoni. 10% of the 10 remaining 10% is made up of a blend of Chardonnay, Riesling Italico, and Malvasia. So I've heard of Garganega, 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 I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, and Trebbiano, of course, uh, Cortez, Cortesi, I'm sure that's Cortesi, is what they make Gavi out of, and we love Gavi. Uh, the other blends uh, I've never heard of, I mean, the Incrocio and Tokai, Fuliano, and no idea what those other grapes are. There's so many grapes in Italy, right? But um, somebody recommended this to me, and you know what? I'm, it's just what people ones I've never had before. I have a feeling I've had this once before. It has been quite a while, I don't really remember it. <clears throat> I could be wrong. Definitely not this vintage, it would have been years ago. But this is, uh, I just bought this to BC liquor stores in the last month, so 2017 is still, it's still on the shelves. Five years old. Mm. Nice nose, really fruity. Really tropical. Mm. Guava, pineapple, pineapple. Did I just say guava, pineapple, pineapple? Guava, papaya, pineapple is what I was trying to say. A little bit of, uh, like underripe banana. <clears throat> well, some minerality there too, I think. Thirteen point five percent alcohol. This is from uh, Verona, by the way, the Verona region in Italy. 55-year-old indigenous native vines from Verona. Okay. The Bonomo family. All right. So, it's certainly an interesting blend. And 21, 22 bucks, whatever it was. Hmm. That's nice. Um... First thing I thought was it I got some Chardonnay notes there, um, and there's some Chardonnay in it. But as I said, the last ten percent is a blend of Chardonnay, Riesling, and Malvasia, so there can't be that much Chardonnay. In it. So it's settling in with some tropical fruit, with some. Some flora characteristics, like some uh, um, white blossoms, white flowers, medium finish, like medium viscosity, maybe medium minus even, medium alcohol, although 13.5 should be higher, it doesn't, doesn't seem that though. No, it's nice. I yeah, like the gri grillo. Might be better with food. No, mm, it's uh, yeah, uh, good. Again, I recommend. Mm. What do you think? <laughs> I was just gonna, I thought you might say something funny, but I didn't think you were actually gonna have a sip. Well, at this point in your life, what the hell, eh? Mm, what do you think? A little bit? Sure, give me the cheap stuff. Bring me back with the extravagant video. <laughs> She's a good girl. Okay, so yeah. Um, Two good whites so far, uh, and uh, man, Italy. It was a long time before we really started to like Italy whites. We had trouble with them for a while, but boy, they, we've sure come around to them. Uh, these are both delicious. Okay, let's uh, go down under now and uh, try the red. All right, so here's the red. So, this is the one I'm most excited about because I'm also the most skeptical about it. I don't know, we'll see. What we have here is 2013. Wolf Blast Gold Label Syrah from the Adelaide Hills of Australia. 
I did not misspeak. It is Syrah, not Shiraz. As I'm sure you know, uh, it's the same grape, but it's called Syrah in most of the world. It's called Shiraz in Australia. The, so Australian Syrah, even though it's the same grape, is very rare. Um, they just don't call it that. It's not, this is not unique, there are, you know, you, you can find it, but it's really rare. It's almost always called Shiraz. So this is from the Adelaide Hills, a much cooler climate than um, like the Barossa Valley where you get your big Shirazes from. Um, and this is uh, supposed to be more Rhone style. So let's find out. And also 2013, right? This is not in my cellar. This is off the latest sticker store shelves. I bought this less than a month ago. So, and it was, you know, reasonable price, right? Makes the cheap and cheerful. Um, and Wolf Blast is a good name. I mean, a lot of people sometimes get uh, scared of buying from the big corporations, the big, you know, the big mass producers, but I've never had a bad bottle of Wolf Blast wine, even as cheap stuff. It, it's a color tier. They think it's, I think red is the cheap stuff. Yellow, gold, gray, black, platinum, I think. Um, and there's a few special ones in there somewhere, too. They may, used to make, a, I say used to because I haven't seen it for a few years, a, a Gewürztraminer made a Riesling blend that was a uh, red label and it was like 15 bucks. You see it in everything wine sometimes and it was delicious. So, and the yellow stuff's perfectly good too, which is usually a little bit more expensive but still in the 20-ish range. This one, you know, gold. Good price, so. Mm. So, I would never have uh, pegged this as a Australian Shiraz. I guess it's not, but... Still a lot of red fruit, um, black fruit, but not not that big black, jammy black fruit that the, the uh, traditional Shiraz brings you. Not as peppery as uh, Shiraz tends to be. It's kind of, there's a little bit of, maybe a hint of white pepper there, but it's not, uh, not something you notice immediately. All right, let's see how it tastes. Nine year old, almost a decade old off the liquor store shelves for that price, eh? Man, if it's good, this is a bit of steel. Let's find out. Yep, that's not Shiraz. <coughs> I'll get something cut my throat there. It's not the wine they can be getting. It's just... <coughs> I had a piece of bacon stuck in my teeth and the wine washed it down into my throat. Maybe it felt like there was something going down my throat other than wine. Okay. So, um, that's a nice wine. Well, we just see how this holds up. I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, aerate or decant it. Pop and pour. I'm not going to drink a whole lot of this right now. I'll be probably drinking it throughout the day. Be interested to see. If it gets better or worse over a few hours. So it's nice now. It's, it doesn't have a lot of complexity though. That's the blackberry, black cherry, hint of pepper, not a lot, a little bit, there's a little bit of spice there, um, not a lot, I mean it's certainly, it's certainly showing well for its age, it certainly doesn't have, there's very, virtually no, you know, forest floor, earthy, leathery, tobacco-y characteristics. Um, not much that you'd think you'd expect really at a nine-year-old wine right out of the bottle. It's really, the Adelaide Hills is in northeast Australia, I think. Don't quote me on that. I mean, interesting. It says the Adelaide Hills uh, region known for its elegant and perfumed straw. I don't find it particularly perfumey. It also mentions it would this would uh, drink beautifully young 
and fresh or will reward with careful celery. They did the celery for you, right? Oh, it's got one of those QR codes too. Cool. Nice. Um, everyone should be doing that soon. Leave it to Wolf Bless. I'll tell you the stories. Uh, the stories I've heard about this guy, Wolf Bless. He was at a my brother-in-law belongs to the uh, Australia in the Australian Wine Society, which is just a group of people who get together and drink a lot of Australian wine uh, based out of Vancouver. We've gone to a couple of their dinners, and they're great. But Wolf Blast was at one of them. Back in the day, they used to have a lot of principals come out. Back when it was a little more, you know, easier to travel than that. And, uh, boy, some stories about this guy. I'm not going to tell you because I'd, I'd probably put an R rating on my, uh, on the vlog. Picking up a little bit of blueberry now. Hint of like bacon fat, and I'm sure that's not that's not the bacon pieces stuck in my teeth anymore. Just a medium finish though. Drops off a little faster than I'd like. Almost gets a little. It's the tannins are kind of silky, but it almost starts to finish a little watery. You know, it's like it comes on strong and then fades. Yeah, but still, um, do I recommend it? Yeah, I, I, I do. You know, I, I, if you're, um, you know, I don't know where you're going to be able to find this. I know BC liquor stores are selling it because I just bought it a, a month ago. For those of you that aren't in BC, uh, it was this, I don't, I don't know if this was something exclusive to the BC liquor stores. Because really, they, I mean, how much 2013 Gold Label Syrah can they be releasing right now? I mean, I'm sure there's some. But... Like this is not a winery that holds their wines back a decade normally, especially at the gold level. Like I said that's kind of the mid tier. Um, so why, like, why does this suddenly show up at the BC liquor stores? I don't. Know. Um, maybe you can find it in private liquor stores, but I, I mean, will it be twenty thirteen? I don't, I don't have any idea. Uh, it's a real. It's an interesting thing about it. It's got uh, French writing on the front and back. Why. Hmm. Did they label this just for Canada? I doubt it. Is it French because it's supposed to be a Rhone style Chirac? Hmm. I'm not sure. Anyway, so this is a pretty uh, pretty successful um, three bottle vertical here, or horizontal, whatever you want to call it. It's actually just neither of those. Three, a tasting. Uh, three bottle tasting. Um, the Gorilla was still good at $12.99. Uh, remember, till March 31st, depending on when you're watching this, it might be tomorrow or the next day, and you might be out of luck. But I highly recommend you go check those. Even, even if you don't get it for the 31st, even at $17, bucks, it's it's nice wine. But for 30 it's steel. I went out and bought two more of them after I tasted it. Um, all, all good wines. You're going to enjoy them all. I'm going to have a, I will do a blog post in the next couple days with these wines and some other ones with official scores and ratings. Um, so check that out, because if this one, I will post in that, I, my recommendation is this is good, but in the blog post, I'll have tasted it for hours, and we'll see if it gets better or worse, or doesn't change, because uh, I'm intrigued by a nine-year-old Syrah, how it's going to react once it hits the air. Um, you know, again, mid-level Syrah, this is not a Syrah that's meant to go 25 years or 30 years. Um, at that price point, you wouldn't, I mean, you'd think you'd get a decade out of it at most. And for it to come in the bottle at almost a decade, that's kind of unusual. Um, but anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I hope I've given you a few options. Go get the grill. And um, I will be back. I have another episode of uh, Ex Extravagant and Excellent coming up. I also have just started uh, filming the Rosé series. Um, I have a handful of Rosés in. Uh, as I taste through them, I will have those on camera for you, so that won't be too long. And then i got a whole bunch of other good stuff planned as well. So, uh, as I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it for you. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel, please. Like uh, the video uh, on YouTube if you can. Um, that sure helps a lot. I'm going to pour myself another glass of this. Uh, and see if it gets better. I think it might. I don't know. I'm actually really... Not sure whether it'll get better or worse, but I suspect it'll be one of those two. So anyway, until next time, don't forget, drink great wine. See you soon.